Fuerte Ventura's popularity with tourists, especially Europeans, is a result of its southerly latitude which guarantees a good climate. It is the second largest of the Canary Islands off the coast of Africa. Cooling breezes blow constantly on this Spanish island, so extreme heat is a rarity. Visitors landing at the international airport find themselves in the midpoint of Fuerteventura. Some head north to the resorts up in the northeast corner. Others choose to head south where there are other alternatives. In this video, I show you the best places to stay in Fuerteventura. I'll start with Coralejo. Coralejo's location is at the top of Fuerteventura looking to the Atlantic at the north and east. Large sand dunes and desert are on the other two sides. The dune area has become a nature reserve which appeals to many of the visitors staying in Coralejo. A third resort in Jandia is Costa Calma, which has a significant expat population. There is plenty of accommodation here, all built in relatively recent times. It is a purpose-built resort town. Strangely, its name does not tell you that winds blow, especially in Fuerteventura's summer months of July and August. Coleta de Fust Resort with an Antigua municipality has only developed in recent years, but there has been a settlement here for centuries. Claudio de Lisson built a castle in the harbour in the middle of the 18th century. It was the defence against pirate attacks. Muro Jabal on Jandia Peninsula is famous for its lighthouse, and to its north, the Jandia National Park attracts plenty of tourists during their holidays. This is a protected area where several species of marine birds nest each year. The salt marsh within the park is a fascinating ecosystem that nature lovers are certain to enjoy. El Cotulo is a coastal town and La Oliva municipality in the north, was once a small fishing village. Even now, its permanent population is not much more than 1,000. It was originally a village that was settled because it was a convenient harbour for trading with Madeira. Fishing was the other means of support in a place that was known as Puerto del Roque. The capital of Fuerteventura only took that status in 1860 from Antigua. It was known as Puerto de Capras, Port of Goats, when the capital was Betancuria. Fishing was the main activity, and there was the added benefit of a sheltered harbour. While Gran Tarajal town has just 8,000 inhabitants, it is important to the island's economy. It takes its name from the local tamarisk tree. The fishing harbour is an important feature with the promenade popular with locals and visitors alike. The annual deep sea fishing championship each September attracts hundreds of boats, and the catches always include fine swordfish and tuna. Betancuria is the ancient capital of Fuerteventura. It is located on the west of the island and today has a population of less than 1,000. This is a mountainous part of Fuerteventura, and the town takes its name from Jean de Bethencourt, who founded it in the early 15th century. Soon afterwards Pope Martin V founded a bishopric centred on Betancuria, that included all of the Canary Islands other than Lanzarote. Costa de Antigua was briefly the capital of Fuerteventura. It took over from Betancuria in 1834, but in 1860 it lost that status to Puerto del Rosario. Antigua is located inland, 17 kilometres southwest of the capital. One of the reasons for that change was that Antigua is located inland. La Oliva is the northern part of Fuerteventura and includes the town of Coralejo in the northeast corner facing Isla de Lopez. The sand dunes here are an attraction. It is an unspoilt region that is worth exploring. Lajas is just a simple village, a short distance from the beaches of Mahanicho and Coralejo. There are surfing schools at both places, but many who come to surf pick Lajas itself for accommodation. That is because it is inexpensive, but clean and comfortable. There is a peninsula in the southwest of Fuerteventura, Jandia, in the municipality of Pajara. La Paird Isthmus which connects this peninsula to the rest of Fuerteventura is just six kilometres wide. A number of small resorts are found on Jandia, which is also where the highest point on the island is found, Pico de la Zaza, at a height of just over 800 metres. Coffeet is one such resort that was formerly just a fishing village. Fuerteventura does not get as much attention as Tenerife and Gran Canaria, the other two Canary Island options for tourists. For many people that is an advantage. The island's best beaches and clear warm waters are the first thing to mention. The lack of crowds means that you will always be able to find privacy. There is plenty of accommodation to suit every budget, ideal for families, couples and singles. The climate is good enough to holiday any month of the year.